Okay, here's our little processing sketch window and we can go ahead and type in commands like line 0, 0, 100, 100 which draws a line from coordinates x, y, 0, 0 to coordinates x, y, 100, 100. Click on play, we see the canvas pop up and here's our line from 0, 0 to 100, 100. If we change the stroke weight, stroke weight, whatever we will draw afterwards, in this case with the line command, we'll have a different stroke weight, different from 1, which is the default. And we set it to 10, for example, and it looks like this. We can also, what we can also do is we can, let me, let me just shorten the line a little bit, let's say to 30 and net, not draw it diagonally, but only to the right. So here's our little example, and obviously you only see half of the line because it's start, started to draw, be drawn in the origin, and it has basically it would overlap over the window. Uh, and in order to make sure that we see it completely, let's translate it, which is another word for let's shift it towards the center of our little canvas. So we translate it to 50-50 because at the beginning of the canvas size is 100-100. So now we see the full line in its whole glory being drawn from zero, like 50-50 to 80-50. Okay, because it's it starts at 0-0 zero, zero and goes to 30-0, but then it's the whole thing is shifted by 50-50. Okay, um, what we can do now as well, we can say, hey, let's, let's rotate the line. Let's rotate it by a, the fourth, a fourth of a circle. So by 90 degrees and schwupp, it was rotated by 90 degrees. If we now repeated this process a few times. So we say int i equals zero until i equals 10. We increase i and we execute these commands. And instead of changing the rotating it by 90 degrees, we just rotated by 36 degrees and now obviously we also draw 10 lines and we get something like this. This is great. Um, previously we changed the stroke weight, now we want to change the stroke color which is done with the stroke command and the stroke command receives a color value as a parameter and we generate a color value as a parameter with the color function, which in turn receives a red, green, and blue color value between zero and 255. So we say 255 for red, zero for green, and zero for blue, which will return a really bright red for our stroke color. Here we go. Now, in addition to all of this, we want to draw a little dot in the in the center of the flower. Oh, yeah, obviously this is going to be a flower, right? So we want to draw a little dot. We do that with the ellipse command. And we give it the first parameter. The first two parameters of the ellipse command are the coordinates. So we draw it in the origin again, but it's also shifted by the translate command that is previously executed because everything all the drawing functions that are after that that are called after the translate are translated so we draw it in the origin and then give it a diameter 15 and 15 both dimensions x and y um, now the draw the ellipse would be drawn with the same stroke color as as before, which yeah, 
which doesn't make any sense to us because we want to have it as a different distinct color from the petals of our flower. So we set the stroke weight which is which is basically the border of the ellipse to zero and the fill color which is the actual ellipse form itself in this case the color of the ellipse itself we set that one to a bright yellow which is red 255 green 255 and blue zero we execute and we see a, a beautiful little red yellow flower wonderful now we can do the following thing instead of just writing writing the code down here we can also write the code into a setup method the setup method is called at the beginning of our of the program execution so as soon as we click play the setup method is called so nothing has changed right now from previously yeah it's just called once at the beginning of a program once we click play but now that we have created the setup method we can write down other functions like for example int so it's a function that returns an integer value get random sorry random color and random color should return a color with random red, green, and blue values. Not completely random because I don't want to have a black value. So let's say red should be between random values 120 and 255, whereas green and blue can, can actually be absolutely random between 0 and 255. Uh, there we go. So that's what we can do. So here instead of calling a specific stroke color we can say get random color which we have now defined up here. Now the computer knows what we mean by get random color and get random color returns a color value composed of these three random values. So when we execute the program, we get different colors from before. Now remember this one, orange, green, grayish. And now we execute it again. And again, it will have different color values. It's like pinkish and red. So that's, that's pretty cool. Now we made it, we made it a little, little bit more dynamic, our code. But we can go even further. We can say, um, for example, here, the translate, no, oh, no, let's start with the size of the flower. For example, we can say a floating point number flower size determines our the size of our flower. And every everywhere where we make some statements about the flower size, for example, the width of the stroke of the petals, be related to this flower size variable. In this case, stroke weight should be set equals to flower size. And then here the line, instead of the petal length being 30, it should just be three times flower size, for example. And here the petal, no, sorry, the, the dot of the flower should be 1.5 times flower size in both dimensions x and y. So again nothing has changed except for the random color of course that changes now every time. The dimensions haven't changed but now if I if I change the flower size up here my flower shrinks a little or including the petal length, the petal width and the spot. And if I increase the flower size instead of 10, I set it to 15 now, it grows. It grows even beyond our little canvas here, it's cut off. Okay, so we introduced some flexibility regarding the code below here by introducing a variable and make this code dependent on that variable. We can also do that regarding, uh, regarding the coordinates. Down here we have float y and x and y and we translate 
the flower to these coordinates. And now I, I shift everything as before to 50-50, so it's still at the center of our little, oops, still at the center of our canvas. However, now that I've introduced those variables, I can easily, oh, let's make the flower a bit smaller again. I, so I make a small flower and I shift it to the left by decreasing its the x coordinate. No, this is what we get. So we have even more flexibility now, more variability regarding the flower drawing. And what we can do with all this, instead of just executing it once in the setup method, when we call up our function, we could uh, provide a, a new method called draw flower. And this method gets a float x, a float y parameter and a float flower size parameter. And what it does, it, is, it executes exactly this code down here. It draws, so I cut it out now, the code, and I paste it in here. So now I know if I call the draw flower method, just like I called my get random column method before, and I feed it with, provided with x, y, and the flower size parameter, then it will go ahead and set the stroke weight, the stroke accordingly, will translate all the subsequent uh, draw, drawing commands, rotate, etc., etc., in accordance with those three parameters I passed it. So instead of saying flower size equals 5, x is equals 20, y equals 50, I can just go into the setup method and call draw flower x equals 20 we said, y equals 50 we said, and flower size equals 10. So we can just do exactly that and we'll get exactly the same result as before. Oh no, I increased the flower size. So to get the exact result as before, I should reduce the flower size again to 5. Now that's fun. Um, and in order to not get stuck in this little canvas, we want to actually have a big canvas. So there is another command for that. I say size of the canvas should be 800 by 600. The background color of the canvas should be set to zero, which is a nice, sweet black. And then the draw method is also predefined by processing. It's executed repetitively until the, term, until the program stops. And every time the draw method is called, which is all the time, I want to have processing check whether a key has been pressed. So I ask is if key pressed equals true, then I draw a flower and I want to draw the flower at random values, a random x value, which is, um, I know that the canvas width can canvas x dimension is is stored in this in this width variable here and the canvas height and the y dimension of the canvas is stored in the height variable here these are all uh, global variables provided by processing again and the flower size should be somewhere between 5 and 25 let's say so this this should be done every time I click click on a, on a key on my keyboard. So this is what we get. Beautiful flowers. And again, the code on the left-hand side. Hope that was informative. End of tutorial number one.